factor. SIFT stands for a Scale Invariant Feature Transform. And this particular feature detector addresses the problem of matching features with changing scale and rotation. So what we'll see is this is primarily used for recognizing objects. Um, once you have a training image or some, some other image of the object, we want to recognize it in a new image. And it's shown to be very successful. Experiments uh, from a number of people have shown that it's one of the best approaches for feature matching. And it was uh, initially developed by uh, Lowe in 2004. There have been many variants of it since. So the approach of this transform is to first create a scale space of images. This uses the, um, the Gaussian function with increasing values of sigma. So we create a set of progressively uh, blurred Gaussian images. Then we take differences of each pair of images in the scale to get a difference of Gaussian pyramid. And um, the difference of Gaussian is very good approximation to the function Laplacian of Gaussian. We next find local extrema in this scale space. So this removes the scale uncertainty. We can, we can find um, key points or features reliably no matter how big they are by looking for the right scale at which they can be found. Once we've found these key points, we um, compute a feature vector by finding the histogram of gradient directions around the feature point. And that can be matched um, to another image. So this shows the scale space of images where we, um, we apply a Gaussian uh, of, of uh, increasing values. At some point, we can, we can subsample the images without loss of information. Then we take the uh, difference between every pair of images in the stack and that gives us a difference of Gaussian uh, array. So once then we can look for uh, peaks in this difference of Gaussian array, both laterally and um, between the images above and below. So here we've showing uh, we found a peak uh, at this point and a peaks here and here. These are minima and that is a maxima. So um, what if you if just to analyze a bit what why this is finding uh, interesting things this finds blobs so the size of the blob is determined by the sigma of the Gaussian so here is the Laplacian of Gaussian operator if I applied that to a signal like this I would get um, responses that look like this so at some point the response is a maximum when the size of the Laplacian of the Gaussian approximately matches the size of the blob that I'm looking for. So that gives me the scale at which that feature point can be detected, and also the, the location in the image. So here's an example of finding um, the, the blob uh, corresponding to this feature here. And that has the peak at this value of sigma in this at this level here. We can also um, localize the peak more precisely within the image by fitting a um, a quadratic surface to the values in the neighborhood, and then finding the peak um, of that surface. So that gives us a uh, subpixel precision of the location of the peak. Okay, ex as far as extracting the um, the feature features around each key point, um, first thing we do is we compute a histogram of the local gradient directions at that scale that we found the peak from, and um, put those in a uh, histogram like this, where we have um, most gradients in the neighborhood at this angle, then that is assigned to be the angle of that whole patch. So this removes the rotational uncertainty or um, uh, degree of freedom of these feature points. So <coughs> that gives us the uh, XY location of the key point, its scale, and its orientation. This shows um, feature points that have been extracted from this image where the length of the vector corresponds to the scale, 
and the angle of the vector, of course, is the angle. So these are the original difference of Gaussian extrema. This is the, re the ones that remain after thresholding. And this is applying a further threshold of comparing the ratio of the principal uh, curvatures. So we, this uh, only keeps points that have a reliable orientation. OK, as far as the, um, the feature vector itself, what we do is we take the neighborhood around the feature point and um, uh, take the gradient directions of all those points, quantize them into eight different directions, and then form a histogram. So that's done for um, a 16 by 16 neighborhood around the point. And um, it's formed in a 4 by 4 histogram array. So uh, with eight orientations in a 4 by 4 array, that's 128 uh, elements of this feature vector. So it's a very rich uh, feature vector. Now, this I'm, I'm not going to explain exactly how this is done, but uh, here are some training images of objects where we can extract feature points from them. Here are feature points that were matched to these training images. So you can see there's quite a bit of occlusion here, but just matching a small number of feature points, just like three or so, is enough to recognize the object. And we also um, impose um, constraints that it actually forms a valid pose. It's another example composed of these two training images and finding those in this fairly cluttered scene. Um, you can see just a few feature points extracted on each of these objects. And yet another image here with um, training image examples. Uh, we extract feature points from these, put them in a database, and search for those in the larger image. And here um, it was able to find those, those objects in this other image.